Hello everyone and welcome back. With the introduction of Onslaught mode, now it's a perfect time to show off those killer builds that are capable of dealing with larger amounts of enemies all at once. Since I have plenty of those builds already, I recommend you check out my playlist showcasing this, but for builds today, we'll be sticking with a simple yet powerful build designed around locking down areas. With a fast ability regen, infinite grenades, back to back dot effects, hefty damage build up over time, and great survivability built into it, this kit is perfect for those who want to reach high level waves easily and smoothly. To start you're going to want to have touch of flame so that our solo grenades have increased duration and will do additional damage. Then you want heat rises where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air. While airborne and have heat rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. Solo grenades are one of the best grenades to use when locking areas down inflicting high damage over time and just being consistent in damage. With Touch of Flames, you can make them not only last longer, but also deal out a higher damage ratio that can outperform what other grenades do. Along with Incinerate Snap and a good mod setup, once we activate our Zotic, we should be able to create a steady routine of getting back our grenades and melee in a well-coordinated manner. For Fragments, Ember of Ashes where you apply more squad stacks to targets, Ember Searing, where defeating Scorched targets grants melee energy and creates Fire Sprite. Ember Benevolence, where applying Restoration, Cure, or Radiant to allies grants increased ability regen for us. And Ember of Torches, where power melee attacks against targets makes you and allies radiant. The most easiest way to keep the build afloat while making it lethal is to just simply rely on Ember Benevolence and Ember of Torches effect, while also supporting our team. Outside of the mods, the fragments are strong enough to support all of our key abilities as long as we net those mini hits correctly. We can trigger some bracers effect very easily when against minor enemies, but say against majors, it will have a big problem unless you weaken them first. Luckily, Ember of Ashes will enhance our scorch damage so we do more over time and saving will be there in case things don't go as planned. As long as we trigger Benevolence effect as often as possible, our sun bracers are safe where they are and always have a backup plan in case things don't go as planned. For the monster stats, we have both resilience, discipline and strength being the main focus of the build. Although strength won't have a higher tier applied to it, simply because only many buffs being applied to it anyways. Resilience, we have ours at a tier 8 for a 24% damage reduction. Although reaching higher is recommended when playing in the higher waves, tier 8 is a good spot to start when using the build as you can easily build upon it down the line. No major mods are required for this section. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via solo grenades. Our grenades will be used quite a bit when some bases are active, but outside of that, the grenades will be used here and there when our Zotic isn't active at times. With Heat Rise's aspect, we can of course go ahead and consume our grenades to garner more melee energy faster, which for me does carry a lot of benefit when kickstarting fights. As we have a lot of energy going towards melee, Consuming our grenades will allow us to constantly top off our melee over and over again, and thus allow us to activate some bases effect as many times as we like. We also have momentum transfer and impact induction mod, which will grant us a 12% bonus for both stats to keep afloat. Once some bases are active, these mods will greatly enhance how often the two are used, and vice versa. Lastly, we have strength, where we have ours at tier 5 for a 1 minute 9 second cooldown via incinerator snap. There is a lot of things going on with the stat, so outside the use of the fragments and aspects, I would say the following mods are all that you need. So, mini kickstart, orbs of restoration, outreach, and times two distribution mods. As some bases are quite easy to activate, the following mods are there to help when the mini energy does run out, and you need a quick boost of energy to bolster it further. These are more used for the passive means that they provide towards the build overall. And lastly, lastly, are the additional mods left for the users. Charged up times 2 is going to give you an extra plus 1 of armor charges once active. And then adding on stacks and stacks will allow orbs of power collected to go from 1 to 2. Next, having the harmonic siphon mod for producing orbs of power via solo weapon kills will help big time. And then having ashes to ashes mod is a must for the build with how much grenades are created. And then lastly, heavy ammo mods will help with dealing with bosses over time. Now, weapons being used, we have Osteo Striga SMG, which is a perfect combo to use when applying with another dot based setup. Although having narcotic grip and the following weapon will be a better combo to use, as it has a much more wider depth of synergy applied to it, 
Osteo and Thorn can be used outside of the given pairing just because of their unique effect alone. I have found that the dot damage it spreads is perfect for taking on waves upon waves of enemies all at once, and then using our solar to finish will allow us an even easier way of triggering some bases effect more often. In terms of flexibility, it's probably the best go-to weapon for Onslaught with how perfectly in line it is with dealing with waves. For heavy, we have the Apex Predator with Vorpal Reconstruction on it. This is my personal go-to weapon for taking on bosses and mini bosses at a moment's notice and is quite powerful once reconstruction kicks in. Only thing to note is that it may be wise to bring a rocket launcher with you in general since overloads do appear in the game mode, so having this with a seasonal mod that provides overload rounds to the weapon also plays another big part within the build itself. So it has been a while since we have fully used Sunblazers to the max, and while useful in most general PvE content, within higher end game content such as GMs or Dungeon, it does start to fall off in terms of usefulness the higher difficulty it goes. However, with the Onslaught mode introduced, this sort of feels right at home with how OP they can get with crowd control. What's not to love when you want to throw off multiple grenades at a target and mark off entire areas as a no-go zone? Well, this build has that for you with its fast ability regen for both grenades and mini option. The best way to maximize our build present in the game is to focus on allowing our melee to regen through normal means, aka a fragment provided, and then build off that success so the rest of the kit will greatly benefit on it as well. Having both Ember Benevolence and Torches is a must for the build, as this will not only grant us the ability energy back to us on a consistent manner, but also grant Radiant, which for me and my team will be a big source to rely on outside the uses of seasonal mods. At the same time, using Heat Rises aspect is also going to be a plus one, as this will allow us to garner mini energy back when we consume our grenades. Now, that might seem risky to do at first, but since some braces will automatically refill upon activation, you can get away with pulling this off just fine. On top of that, our mods will be enough to support the lone stat as well, so it's not like we won't be able to use our grenades freely even when some braces aren't active. The most important part of this will be the main weapon, which is Osteo Striga, as this alone will have a heavy impact with its dot effect. Although we did get nerfed a bit, the following weapon is still as good as even after the nerf was applied to it. With it combined into the build, the kit becomes a dot ticking machine with solar and now poison damage continuously applying onto the enemies caught by it. The fire effect with its continuous solar damage will scorch and even trigger ignition blast for an even wider effect on all targets it faced, while the poison damage will slowly spread to others along with this solar damage applied. Can you see why this might be useful in onslaught mode now? Lastly, we also have one major ace up our sleeves from the seasonal mods, and that is the revitalizing blast effect debuff via our abilities. So combining everything into one allows you to dominate waves after waves of enemies with nothing holding you back. Although, the only thing that does kind of hold the build back is the health regen when you do hit the later waves like wave 40 to 50, as this is where things tend to get a lot more harder and hectic. Luckily, we do have Well of Radiance and Phoenix Dive that are both grant us health regen, but with how often it's available, it might not always be enough against certain bosses you face. Overall though, if you want a nice and simple build to try in a new game mode, then I have this nice little wall up build that would do you just good. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, but at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.